everyone. Welcome back to RTS and welcome back to Paper Pad Party. And I'm telling you, it's going to be a party, my friends, because I have a lot of paper pads. And we're going to talk about paper pads. And we're also going to talk about base pages for double page layouts because my subscribers have been, have been asking me if I could definitely do some more base pages but keep double page layouts in mind. So we're going to have a little bit of talk about that, a little bit of things that you can do to your base pages if you want to dress them up a little bit, just a little bit of talk more about base pages and a lot of talk about paper pads so go crack them open we're gonna play this weekend so I'm going to have a video for today and tomorrow I'm gonna to split them in half so this video isn't too long and that way it just gives you double the fun double the pleasure yes okay so what I'm going to do is as I talk about each base page that I played with I'm going to talk about the paper pads that I used in case you want to do that now of course the very first one I had to pull was Jen Hatfield simple life only because all of you gals are showing what you're getting a Tuesday morning oh it just makes me want it all but you know you can't have it all but I will tell you it's interesting how Tuesday morning is getting product in that was not even part of the addition you know the original release especially like that 12 by 12 chipboard in this simple life that wasn't available when this came out. So it's interesting how companies uh, are working with Tuesday morning on that concept. Very fun. Okay. So the very first one I'm going to do, and I will talk about my measurements as I do my base page. So you can play along with me. Yes, there won't be any PDF. There won't be any written instructions because this was just for fun, but I will have I will have uh, measurements. So the first one is Jen Hadfield, Simple Life. Love. This is my favorite Jen Hadfield line. Bar none. Always will be. And so, of course, I have some papers here. And I'm hoping I have everything. <laughs> I'm hoping I have everything in order. It takes a little bit of time to do this when you're filming because you don't want to waste so much time. And so the papers I'm going to play with out of that paper pad is this beautiful cherry blossom. And that lovely wood grain and, of course, that plaid. And then I have some border stickers here because we're going to talk about that as well. And then I have some cardstock. So along with this round of doing nothing but uh, base pages, double page layouts in mind, and then playing with the paper pads, I also wanted to do something different. You know me. I'm always doing something different. As that I wanted to play with this right here. And that would be colored cardstock because this I have a lot of these paper pads too. I wouldn't say I have a lot. I have about a dozen of these. You know, when you can get a paper pad cardstock for $4.80, sometimes you just have to do it because you can really get a lot of use out of that for 48 sheets. What would that be? I don't know, but that's cheap. So I'm going to play with also cardstocks that are in paper pad. How's that for something different? Yes, not everything's going to be white and ivory this round. Just a little bit of something fun to add some variety to my base page album. And we talked about that in previous videos. So hit the show more button and you'll see more base page. So back to this layout number one, which is going to be a double page. I'm hoping I can spread it in, but you'll get an idea. Okay, so again, Jen Hatfield's Simple Life. And then I also played with some pink cardstock. And these, you'll see where this came from. But that is from this paper pad right here. Festive Pinks by Recollections. Hot by paper pad. Love those hot by paper pads. Yes. And I'm telling you what, that's quality cardstock. It's nothing chintzy. Okay, so. And I will tell you, if you're going to get paper pads from now on, if you're going to get paper pads online, you better ask someone's recommendation first because companies are going thinner and thinner with their paper pads. And so I don't always have that option. So before I order a paper pad online, I definitely check out what someone else's opinion is because I don't, I don't like wimpy paper. No. Okay, so now what am I going to do for this base page? You see I have these papers and of course I have two of everything. Hopefully I'll get it more together here as we go. You know, I always have so much to say. And I really have to say thank you to one of my subscribers recently. She left me a comment and she had said that when she first started watching my videos, she said, man, this lady talks too much. She said, but then the more I watch, she said, I understand. She said, because you have something to say. It is about this hobby. I do talk a lot about this hobby because I'll tell you what, in my real life, I think people get tired of me talking about this hobby. I talk about it every single day. Okay. So here are my piece, free pieces that are cut. But the reason I want to show you this for a minute is as you are pulling out these uh, paper pads, 
and we're going to talk about different options and different things to think about when you get your paper pads out and then with your card stocks it doesn't matter which paper pad you buy there's always going to be some paper in there that you just don't like and you know you're just not going to use so think about that as your base for your base pages and your uh, layouts okay so that's what I wanted to show because once I bring out this uh, cardstock here to my left you're gonna be like mm, I need some blinders on and that would be the screen right here <laughs> because this came out of a one of the greens uh, paper pads and it's a nice weight but I will never use this color it's just not I, I'll just never use it so I'm gonna flip it over because I'm gonna have the nice textured side on the on the back and that's why you're gonna see this green <laughs> As this base page I'm gonna be covering up this entire background okay I'm probably already gonna have to move stuff already if I move things too far away then I forget to talk about it <laughs> yes so that's why you see this lovely Kermit the Frog green because I'm going to use that because in this base page I'm going to absolutely be covering uh, I'm going to be covering this entire background up so there's no sense using a pretty piece of white basil because it's just going to get covered up no I'm, I'm not going to use this so I might as well use it for something else is my point okay so let's get with the program here so what I'm going to do with this base page is that we are going to build I have my measurements here we're going to build this okay so we're going to have this cherry blossom paper which is gorgeous oh Jen Hatfield yes now a lot of people like Maggie Holmes florals I like Jen Hatfield's florals isn't that funny okay this stuff uh pink floral that is four inches and of course it's four by twelve and then of course this wood grain is uh six inches okay now let me talk to you about that okay so on my piece of paper I already have a note that says almost six inches and this is what I want to tell you because as you're pulling out these papers from these paper pads you notice how some of these have the hole in the top and that is simply how they are uh, displayed in stores they're put on a hanger okay so when you take that branding strip off that sometimes will cause your paper to not be an exact 12 inches every manufacturer is different there are some companies that even with that branding strip even with that hole even with that perforation you still get 12 inches some you don't in this simple life paper pad i once i cut off that branding strip and that perforated edge because i don't like that you don't get a full six inches so that's why I had a note there okay so this wood grain is six inches okay and then of course this cherry blossom that's four easy peasy I mean you don't even need to write that down no so what I did in this uh, wood grain paper I just basically cut it in half and you divvy it up okay and then of course the uh, cherry blossom that's what I'm calling it this pink floral that is four inches and then we're gonna go with this lovely plaid right here and that is three inches okay so four inches three inches six inches okay and so then of course what we're going to do then was we're also going to play with a nine by nine block and that was just in that festive pink paper pad isn't that lovely so you may see a little bit of that green peeking out but hold on i got a tip about that too so you see why i used that green because the entire background is going to be covered up there's no sense there's no sense using the good basil or the good American crafts or the good my mind's eye card stock for that. Okay, so I, as I was planning this page, I'm like, mm, I like that, but then you know what happens. A lot of this gets covered up and you don't even see it. Okay, so the reason I wanted to show you that is when you have a layout, If you, it don't matter if you're doing a base page or not, you're doing a layout and you're laying everything down, I want to show you a simple trick. Okay, and that is to simply rotate your page you may like that a little bit better and so for me I like that rotated even though that wasn't my original intention okay you can rotate that so of course I can rotate it like this and then I could rotate this one and so then you see what I'm saying so whenever you see that base page that you like you can get another option by simply rotating that okay so again there was a six there was a three and a four the four the three and the six and so then of course with these nine by nine blocks I'm going to do the inset and I'm going to do it like that or what I can do is you can rotate it again and so I could put this wood grain on the inside it depends on when I go to put this together what mood I'm in <laughs> if I want to see more wood grain if I want to see more floral and then also too, you see another option right here 
you can do the same thing, okay? You can put these bands, because that's all this is, is the band go-to design, is that I can keep them all like this, or I can even take one, put them vertical, take one horizontal, and I guess I'm getting into more of a design rather than base pages. I just want to show options. I won't show this with everyone. I just want to show that when you're doing base pages, don't forget to rotate and also to give yourself the option. What you do on the left does not exactly have to be what you see on the right. Okay, I wanted to show that. So I'm not, you'll see at the end of the video which one I decide to go with. And then one more thing, and we're going to go into base page number two, is that when you have this uh, green, I have this lime green, almost neon green, like 80s neon green. If you if you think that you're going to see any of it peek through, which sometimes it'll happen because not everything is exactly 12 by 12 inches. What I do is that I will t cut a sliver off the very top, just a short sliver. And that way when I go to build my base page, I can still use this 12 by 12, uh, you know, I can use this 12 inch edge right down here to line things up. But yet, when I start pairing things up, then I won't have anything peeking through because I don't want to cut anything down on my pattern papers. So that's just a little bit of a hack that I've learned over the years. If you're using a ugly color for your base and you don't want to see it peek through, you might have to cut a sliver off one or two sides. Sometimes I will do that. Just wanted to show that tip. Okay, so what will I do for this? I don't know. I kind of like that wood grain on the outside. Mm, I don't know. It's all pretty. And I will tell you, when you're doing a page like this, it's kind of hard because you're seeing that green. It breaks up the flow. But uh, honestly, it won't matter. And so then let's talk about one more thing since I have it laying here is that when you're doing base page, this is basically all paper, but that doesn't mean you can't crack out some border stickers or border strippers as we call them. And then you can play with those as well. And if you're not sure where you're going to put them, just go ahead and put these inside your page protector and then you can play with them later. So that's another option. Okay, so uh, let's go on to base page number two. Why not? Yes. Now base page number two. Let's see. What do we have? Oh, what do we have? Oh, and here's that green where that base came from. It came from this right here. This Craftsmith Hot Buy 48 sheets of green. And see, there's beautiful greens in here. But that uh, lime green, yeah, it doesn't do anything for me. So might as well use it for something. Okay, so the next one up is a Pebbles line, and it is called Family Ties. That's the one I'm going to play with next. So I'm going to try to keep these all in order. <laughs> so when I go to put these together, you know what I mean. I don't have any, I don't have any mistakes. <laughs> no, they're already pre-cut. I just have to adhere them down, which I'm not going to do that on film because who needs to see all that? No. So we're going to play with Pebbles uh, Family Ties, and I will tell you this is one of the very first times I bought a paper pad at AC Moore. I haven't been in AC Moore's in years. And when I saw this paper pad in there for $5, I stood there and like, this can't be right. It can't be right because I'm, I was so used to buying all of my manufacturers online. So this is fun. $5 for this. Okay, let's get to the next one. Oh, okay. So this one, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to do a little something different. Okay. Yes, yes, we're going to do something a little different. I have notes everywhere, I'm telling you. Okay, so what we're going to do in this case, okay, so we have family ties, and I'll show you where my cardstock came from. It came from another paper pad called Neutrals, and this has a nice uh, by Craftsmith, and this just has what it says, Neutrals perfect for base pages, especially if you do more darker vintage or masculine layouts. Just want to say that. Okay, so let's pull this out and let's get playing. We're going to do a little something different on this one. So here are my backgrounds. Okay. And so those are just 12 by 12. Pretty little linen color. Okay, and I don't know if I'm in frame, but you'll get the gist. Okay, and so then I have two pieces of paper that are cut down. And you notice that they're not both the same. Sometimes we do double page layouts. We think what's on the left has to be on the right. No, whatever you do on the left, you can rotate or whatever you do on the left, it can be different than what's on the right. Okay, so now that outside mat is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. Okay, so now we're going to go to a floral, which is seven and a half by 11. Okay, and then we are going to go with another, that same piece of floral. 
Well, yeah, that doesn't look like seven and a half by 11. Yeah, here we go. Seven and a half by 11. And then on the right here, I'm going to have four and a half by 11. Okay, so there's that. And then what I'm gonna do is I have some blue dot paper. So here on the left is four and a half by 12. And then of course on the right is my seven and a half by 12. So basically I took that same piece of paper because this is one piece of paper and this is one piece of paper. And then I just divvied them up. One is seven and a half and this is seven and a half and four and a half and four and a half. Okay, and then I'm going to put some border stickers right there and talk about a fast page. Again, those outside mats is 11 and a half by 11 and a half. It's just something different. Now you certainly could gut that if you want, but I will tell you these papers aren't super thick, so I am I will not be gutting that. Maybe I'm you maybe you could. If you want to gut something like that and then perhaps you could use that for embellishments on your layout later on, definitely do that. Just keep it in the page protector. So again, this is an easy one, okay? And I will um tell you again that is seven and a half by eleven those two pieces and these are four and a half by 11 and don't forget you can use border stickers and you can use washi okay let's talk about that and then also too something that I don't do in my process is that I do not ink that is just not something I enjoyed I did it back in the day and then I realized as I was looking through my albums that I didn't like those pages as much as I do if they're crisp and clean. Uh, inking is just not something I like, which is probably why I don't get into mixed media. It's all the same type of application, okay? And then also too, don't forget, distressing. You can distress any or all of your edges. I just wanna share that option because for me, when I do base pages, they are very basic. I don't really put a lot of time into it because I will put the time into however my story develops later on as I go to use those. Okay, so that is number two. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is a beautiful paper pad. I'm telling you, and there went about three of them just sliding. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, my goodness. Hang on a minute. I had a crafty lunch. Yeah, you know that's what that's called, right? When something falls in your space, that is called a crafty lunch. <laughs> Yes, okay. So the next paper pad is gorgeous by the Paper Studio. It's called In Bloom. Okay, now would I say this is worth $20? Oh, I don't know. These florals are just... <laughs> but this paper is not cardstock, okay? And I'm so glad they don't have cardstock there because I absolutely did call Hobby Lobby about that. And I asked them in the future if they could reconsider what they label their paper. If it's not cardstock weight, please don't uh, label it that because I think it's confusing, especially for a new scrapbooker. So this is just pattern paper. It's not cardstock, but it does have beautiful floor, beautiful foil. Look at that. Ooh, gorgeous. Okay. But it's definitely worth $10. Of course, that's when most of us buy Paper Studio. Okay. And so then, where's my note here? The cardstock I use for my base came from this, which is called Winter Whites. Again, another hot buy paper pad. Beautiful colors in this. Just soft pastels. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yes. <laughs> okay. So that is that. So I have my papers here. Okay. So this is going to be something a little fun and very quick. Okay. So there's that pink that came from that Winter White. Winter Whites. So there's my background. And so then my papers, of course, I'm gonna do something different because in that paper pad, or any paper pad, you run across these kind of designs. This right here, where you have a design on the top, have a design on the bottom. It's kind of hard what you're gonna put in the middle. Okay, you're kind of limited to the number of photos if you're going to not break up that design. So the one I'm going to use is this one, if I can find it, this one. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do a double page with just one of those pieces of paper. Of course, it's lovely. It's got floral and wood grain. Oh, yes, mama. <laughs> okay, so of course, what we're going to do is I have that floral paper, and then I have this buffalo check. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, so this floral paper, I just cut that in half. So uh, it's going to be six inches by ten and a half. Okay, six inches by ten and a half. And that's going to be the same on the left and the right. Six by ten and a half. Yes, I'm looking at all my measurements here. <laughs> okay, and then my buffalo plaid is again six by ten and a half. 
Okay, now whenever I'm putting my papers on, I always look to see which design has a heavier bottom. So you see how this has a black at the bottom, this has white, I put that at the bottom. And then I'm going to put that at the top. So it's the same size, six by ten and a half, and that is one piece of paper, and that's one piece of paper. I mean, even if you don't use a paper pad, <laughs> great. And then, of course, this pink dot is two inches by eleven and a half. Okay? Now, <clears throat> or well, I don't have that cut yet. Okay, so then what I did is that I wanted to show that you can just simply put this here. Okay? Now, that's my two by twelve. But when you're doing something like like this, tell yourself that you can make this that same 10 and a half inches wide and you can stop right there. Or what I did, and I think I'm going to do, is that I put a notch on this. So it kind of gave me a block with a banner. Okay, isn't that pretty? I love this. Of course, you know, with that six by 10 and a half, I took that to the end seam. Okay, just for something different. I seem to do that a lot when I'm making a double page layout. It's just that continuity. So again, with this, you could ink this, you could distress this, you could punch it, you could, you know, you could do anything. I just used a pair of scissors and I just cut a notch in it, just like that. I just cut a notch in it. And so you can even make that as um, short. This is a, when I was finished, this is two by 11 and a half. Okay, but I wanted to show this. There's options, it depends on your style. So that's probably what I'll do. Isn't that fun? Okay, now let's go to number three. No, number four. I'm telling you, going fast. Okay, number four. Number four, we're going to play with this Petals in Bloom, which I think is in the top. I was going to say this is by, this was my favorite uh, paper pad by Hobby Lobby, but I will tell you, I think. It has been replaced with a couple this year. So, but this is in the top three, top five, Petals and Blooms. So we're gonna play with this one. And then what I use for my cardstock for my base on this, let me get my papers moved, is that I used something from this paper pad called On the Bright Side. Isn't this gorgeous papers for cardstock? Look at the purple and the plum and the deep purple. And then that teal. And you get into some turquoise. And then this <gasps> mint. Oh, yes. That was nice. $4.80. Yeah. I love when I can get a paper pad like that. Okay. And so I wanted to show that when I pulled out my paper pads this time, I really pulled out my paper pads. I even pulled out paper pads for every one of my card stocks because I've been recently moving them around. And so when you move things around in your space, it's in the forefront of your brain and then you start to use them. And so that's the background that came from that cardstock. Okay, so now let's get playing here with this Petals and Bloom. And I think we're going to basically do a, something like we just did. Okay, now let me get my papers here. Okay, isn't that a gorgeous color? I'm probably going to overlap that so I can get it in frame. Okay, so my floral paper is a 6 by 11 6 by 11 and my dot paper is 4 by 11, 4 by 11. So again, I'm going in seam, doing the offset method, okay? And then of course, I simply have some border stickers. And so that makes for a fast page. Look at that. You could do this, simple design. Again, I'll go over those measurements. This is 6 by 11, 6 by 11. So basically that piece of paper cut in half. This dot paper is 4 inches by 11. And I just cut them down to 11 because I wanted to see this beautiful blue. I mean, when's the last time you played with colored cardstock? I'm really trying to play with more colored cardstock because I have a lot of it. And then what I did for something different, since I only used 4 inches of this dot paper, it's still there. I wanted to show that you can pull out a simple punch. If you're doing base pages, don't pull out all your punches because then you just get too much on your desk. I just pull out like a dot or a scallop, something like that. And then you can play with some of those extra uh, pieces you have left over. And so that's what my plan is. I'm going to put that dot paper up there. And that is just a half inch piece of paper that I ran through that EK Success. Uh, yes, this is one of my top punches ever. Yes, love that. You don't really see the embossed, but that scallop, that is beautiful. And so that is a very simple page. Now again, with this, I wanna show you something. And when you're doing your base pages, don't forget to do this. 
you may get, for me, I'm a horizontal gal. So this is perfect. I could do this all day, every day, never get tired of it. But some people don't like that. So what you could do then is rotate it. Okay. Just simply rotate your designs. Okay. This is just the block design. <laughs> Okay, and I will have the playlist listed below for go to design. So definitely check into that and you could absolutely just pull those in. And again, look at that. <sighs> yes. Now you could put everything flush to the top or you can even come down and give yourself a margin the whole way around on your background. So that's the fun playing with cardstock. It just gives you another color to play with. It introduces another color. So then when you go to play with your page, you have options. I can play with black, navy, yellow, this baby blue, all those colors and those florals. So don't forget, if you think you're kind of getting tired of the same design, don't forget to rotate. Okay, now what will I do for this? Mm, I don't know. I probably will go this way because I know my personality. I know my style and so I like this. Now when it comes to these border stickers, will I trim any of this off? No, I'm going to leave this exactly as it is. It's not a full 12 inches. Fancy pants border stickers were never 12 inches. So I'll just let a little bit of that hang off the edge. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so that was what? Number, that was number four. Easy peasy. Love that background. That pop of blue is something different. Okay, so don't forget, you can do your inking. You can do your distressing. Distressing would be very pretty on those florals. Yes, because I'll tell you why distressing is pretty on floral pattern paper. Because in real life, flowers always have a little bit of roughness around the petals as time goes on. Okay, so now let's go to the next one. The next one is another paper pad by uh, Michaels called Blue Blooms. I think I got this one for like $3 and something. It was insane. And I remember buying two of them because I was like, this is insane. It has navy and florals. Navy and florals. And we talked about in our photo series what I use, or in our layout lunch date, what I use those for. So I'll have that playlist linked below as well. But look at that navy. Now you have to remember, this is not wimpy. This is nice cardstock. So I'm coming from the angle. How many papers does this have? 48 sheets. I'm coming from the angle that I would normally pay 99 cents for this. I'd pay probably a dollar 29 for this. 99 cents for that. 99 cents for that. Let me show a couple more. 99 cents for that. Maybe wouldn't have bought that one. 99 cents for that. 99. That looks like Jen Hatfield right there. And 99 cents. 99 cents. Dollar 29. So what I'm saying is, after I bought four pieces of paper. Of this 48 paper pad. I mean, I already it already paid for itself, so love that. Okay, so then the uh, let me get my notes here. Then the cardstock that I went to go with that was that same one I used before called Winter Whites. I mean, isn't that beautiful? Okay, so that's what I played with for my cardstock. Okay, so let me get my papers here and let's see where we're at. Okay, so this one I even broke out some washi. Well, I've, it's fabric wash. You wanted to show you this. Okay. Now, I better pause there for a minute uh, so I don't lose any footage. But I will be coming right back. And we're going to play with this beautiful in or blue blooms is what it was called. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I am back playing with our paper pads and colored cardstock and doing some base pages. Just having fun. Okay, so for my navy paper, I'll go with floral. Okay, let me speak about floral here just a minute. This is a 5 by 10. 5 by 10. So, in my case, you see with my personality and my style, I use a lot of florals. So, don't let that be uh, what you have to do. Look at that paper pad. If you are drawn to the watercolors, uh, pull that. If you're drawn to the geometrics, do that. If you're drawn to the stripes. If you don't like floral, just find your signature icon and replace that. And then, of course, with my navy, these are 6 by 11. 6 by 11. Okay, and so you see how they're basically stacked on one top of another. The floral is a different size than the navy. And then I have a pink strip here, and this is a two by 11 and a half. So this is what they call a stacked block. Okay, let me see if I can get this side by side. And then with this, I can go to the inseam, or I can, well, I just will. <laughs> because when I do two pages, that's what I do. It just helps you, your eye to see this as a 12 by 24 format rather than breaking it up. So that's why I always pull things into the middle there. 
And so then with that, again, as I showed earlier, you could distress this, you could punch this, you could give it a notch. What I'm going to do is I pulled out some fabric washi and I'm gonna run some fabric washi right across there. Now, this is a very pretty design, but it's very basic. And when you're doing a basic design, that's what you want for a base page because I have no idea what story I'm going to record on this layout. So make it basic. And when you do a base page, when I first started them, I'm like, well, this is generic. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, this isn't going to work for me. But then as you start to use them, oh my goodness, what a time saver. So I will probably run that washi completely over that. So again, this is a five by a five by 11, six by 11, two by 11 and a half for that pink strip. And the washi, I just cut a little more than 12 inches because I'll probably wrap that around my layout. And so, uh, I was going to say, I don't know if I would adhere this now, but I probably will because otherwise that's just one less step I have to do when I use the page. Okay. So that is blue blooms. So now let's go to the sixth one, number six already. Isn't this fun? So this is just something fun to do over the holiday weekend. If you want to make some base pages in a double page layout, uh, what I wanted to say about that, cause I have a note here and I probably will forget. So let me just say that now, when you see this and you see this is a double page, and if you're not a double page gal, here's how you tell yourself when you do this layout. Okay. And they're basically going to be exactly the same, right? I'm going to put my fabric, which that is fabric Navy dot. Oh yes. That's like biscuit with butter. That is awesome. What you can tell yourself is you don't have to keep this as a double page. If you do not generally use double page layouts, go ahead and put this in your base page album or your container that you're keeping your base pages and then don't put them together. So now you have one here and you have one here. Okay. And so just break that up just because we make a double page. When I go to use this, if I like this, I don't have to use both of them. That just gives you the option of two. Okay. And you don't have to worry about having layouts look the same. Most of us don't scrap chronological anyways. Okay. So I just wanted to say that that was in my notes. Okay. So now let's go to the next one, which is die cuts with a view called peachy evergreen. Now what I find interesting about this is that when I bought this, of course, this was last year. Uh, then I noticed the following year or the end of that year, this came out under a recollections brand. I don't know how that works. This was die cuts with a view. Of course, it seems to me like die cuts with a view has been through more hands than anything. So I don't even know. Who, I think it's under American crafts. Now it's crazy how that's working, but how did that end up being under the recollections or the hot buy paper pad? I was astonished, but it's very pretty and it's, you can consider it a fall line to me. It's an everyday line. I mean, look at that. Mm, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. It does have deer, but they're not reindeer. So it's from in my life, this is all year long. Okay. So it's called peachy evergreen. Okay. Look at that. See, now it looks like spring. So again, to me, this is every day. So then what I went with this is that, uh, let me look at my notes here is that I used this green paper pad. <laughs> yes. Remember I told you where that neon green, well, this is what I'm using. And again, I pulled out two of those neon green because I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use them for a base page. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay. I think my paper pads will be sliding in the near future. <laughs> yes. Okay. So here are the papers that I pulled and just excuse the neon green because I'm going to cover them up. Okay. Let me put my papers here. I'll put my papers here. This is a fun layout to do. Now, all of these that I'm showing, I'm using a paper pad, but please know I'm going to put this pretty textured. Uh, it's like a linen. I'm going to put that on the outside. Not that it makes a difference. No one's going to see either one, but you know, that's how my brain works. Um, what I wanted to say is just because I'm using a paper pad, you could use scraps. You could use a collection. You don't have to use paper pad. That's just what I wanted to play with on this round. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to do another band and this time it's not going to be horizontal. We're going to go vertical. So here for my floral, I have six inches, six inches and six inches. And you know, I'm going to be covering up this Kermit the frog green. Okay. So that was just one piece of paper, simply cut in half. It doesn't get any easier than that. So then I have a pink dot piece of paper and let's see, what are they? I have my pink dot is three inches and then I have two and a half inches. Okay. 
three inches and two and a half. Okay. There's my three inches. Okay. And then I have two and a half. So I think this is what I wanted to do. I'm looking at my notes here. I think I got too much going on. Okay. So this is two and a half, six, and that's three inches. Of course, that doesn't look the same, does it? No, one looks like four, one looks like three. I think that's what I'm doing here. Okay, so then what I have is, and this doesn't have to be precise because when you're doing things like this, you're going to be overlapping, so don't worry. As that in my yellow, these are two inches and two inches, and so then I'm simply just going to create bands. Maybe I don't need this one. Maybe I do. It depends. Oh, maybe I can get away with that. Okay, so then, oh yeah, that's why I had this here. Do you see how I took that extra coral, and so I have that, uh, this extra, this pink dot. I have this on the right, but I don't have it on the left. So remember, it, I went back to that, what I was saying, that whatever you do on the left, you do not have to do exactly on the right. And I think when you're doing this band, I think it's nice to break it up so it doesn't look the same. So that I could put this here, and I could put this green here. So that's just a difference, or you could put them together. Isn't that pretty? And then, of course, I had this here, when you have extras like this, what can you do? And we're going to talk about leftovers here at the end of the video. Is that you can go ahead and since this is just an extra piece laying around, you can go ahead and put it in with your base page and use that as embellishments or even use that as a title or an, a cluster base, anything like that. So for this, again, the floral was six inches. The pink dot is three inches. Okay, let me just put that there. Oh, no, I'm not going to do that. This is four inches there. Okay. But three inches, two and a half, and just play with them. And then, of course, these golden yellow mustard and this green, which isn't those colors pretty together. Those are all two inches. So then you just play with them. Now, the reason I wanted to show this is that when it comes to something like this, you can overlap as much as you want. And then also, too, don't forget, this is when you can pull out your punches, okay? And when I'm doing base pages, I usually play with one or two rules of washi and one punch. I don't get hot and heavy when it comes to tools because it's just about playing with paper. So I wanted to show that because I probably, when you see it, the, the finished video, that will probably... I will probably overlap that. And I will tell you, when it, it's really hard when you're doing a background that you don't like, like that lime green. It kind of plays with your eyes a little bit, but then at the same time, you know you're saving money, so you live with it. So again, I want to go over those because I think I was a little cattywampus. These florals are six inches. This pink dot is three and a half and two and a half, and this is four. And then these yellow stripes are two inches and this green uh, trees, that is two inches. And again, I just ran my punch, my scallop punch over that. Okay, very pretty. Now again, with that, that is the band. That's in the vertical sense, but you know, you could always rotate one, okay? You could rotate one, have it horizontal, and then this one here, you could do it in a vertical sense. Isn't that fun? And the reason I like this is because it's unexpected. You don't expect that on a double page layout, but that's fun. Don't forget to do that. Keep rotating your base pages or your sketches. Just keep rotating <laughs> and have fun with it. Yes. Okay. Now let's go to the next one. I'm telling you what, I'm going to put on a video here and I'm going to be adhering them and then you'll see what they look like in the finished, uh, in the finished they're going to see what the finished page looks like at the end of the video. But, you know, they're not going to be nothing too fantabulous because they're just base pages. It's all about playing with paper in paper pads. Okay, and I will tell you in the next video, I will show you what paper pads used to be at Tuesday morning. Oh, it's an um, <laughs> hold on for that. Okay, so this is the last one we're going to do in this video. This is by Pebbles Jen Hatfield Homemade. I fell in love with Jen Hatfield in this line. Yes, we're going to do something very fun on this one, okay? And so what did I use for my cardstock? It was this one here. I'm telling you, another cardstock paper pad. This is called Naturals. Again, that follows that Neutrals. Look at the colors in that. Now, see, here's what I'm saying. When you can get these hot buys truly doing a hot buy, you cannot go wrong, and this is how you build up an inventory. This is 48 sheets. 48 sheets, 12 by 12, 48. Look at this. I would have paid a dollar for this because this has a little bit of a texture to it. I would have paid a dollar for that. I would have paid a dollar for that. I would have paid a dollar for that. So those four pieces of paper, 
that already paid for itself in this paper pad when you can get them for that four dollars and eighty cents or that five dollars even that six dollars you just can't beat that look at all those neutrals so if you're trying to build up build up a stash when it comes to color card stock i really encourage you to look at these michael's hot by paper pads uh and i haven't bought any of these in this past year but before before this past year this is nothing wimpy this is this is cardstock yes okay so uh with this uh homemade jen hatfield homemade what are we going to do well what i did was i pulled that slate gray isn't that pretty from that paper pad okay so what we're going to do is something different and every time i see this on a sketch i'm always saying i'm going to do this but i never do and so this is what we're going to do okay so I just played with three pieces of paper from that paper pad. And so this is what we're going to build. So it's going to be continuous blocks, but I use the corner rounder. And I'm telling you, I see this all the time in scrapbook generation sketches. I see this all the time in um, a lot of digital pages. I see this all the time. And so that's all this is. It's just three pieces of paper. This one in the middle, which are you, are you happy? I didn't use any florals. I uh, specifically pulled out something different because not everybody wants to see florals. But if it was up to me, I would have picked florals and been happy with it. But this is a hexagon. And then, of course, we have a dot and we have the chevron. So this pink is 9 by 10. This piece right here, 9 by 10. This is 2 and 3 fourths by 10. And this is 7 and 3 fourths by 10. And this turquoise is four by 10 and I'll go over those again in just a minute but you see how they have a little bit of a margin and they all have a corner round I just broke out my corner rounder and the corner round is only here and here okay when it meets that straight edge there's no corner round. so in your layout it'll look like one page isn't that pretty how that works I love that okay corner round. and so uh, I'll go over those measurements again. And I like it that it's on this colored cardstock because these papers are just tone on tone except for this. But it's kind of generic. There's not much to this. But then what this does is that this does not limit me. I can basically do any layout with any photo I have in my mind. I can do use this for anything. So this again is a 9 by 10. This is 2 and 3 fourths by 10. This is 7 and 3 fourths by 10. And this is a four by 10. Okay. So very easy to do. And then of course, if you wanted to use some washi and run some washi across the top or the bottom, or if you wanted to do some inking, definitely you could do that or some distressing. When I do my base pages, I'm, I'm very basic. <laughs> yeah. I don't do a lot. Basically a quarter rounder and sometimes a punch, but that's it. Okay. So that's going to wrap up this video, but let's talk a minute for what to do with leftovers, because you see, what do I have? I have a stack of leftovers and I say keep these you can make other base pages with that just put them in a pile on the table have fun playing with them or you can make some cards with them or you can simply just put them in your scrap folder and play with them later or if you have pieces that you know that go with your base page if maybe if you want to stick a couple pieces in there in your page protector or along with these layouts so you have to play with play with them as you build the page you might as well they're already here so that definitely is an option you can consider for that as well because say for this page here see where i have this turquoise dot so when i go to do this layout down in the future it may be a month from now it could be two years from now don't matter i put no time limit on my hobby it is what it is so i may want this color over here well i may not remember what paper pad i may not even own it so if i wanted to go ahead and stick this in that page protector with this base album or with this base page that would be a smart option because then I could use this for my title or some embellishment clusters or even punch out some other hexagon. So it's just an idea, okay? With your leftovers, you can do a little bit of both. Okay, so I'm going to end there. And so what that means is come back tomorrow for the holiday and we're going to do another round. I told you, I think we're going to have about a baker's dozen by the time we're done playing with our paper pads. Isn't this fun? So I just suggest sitting down today over the weekend, over the holiday and pull out some paper pads. And then I want to give you a tip when it comes to paper pads. So what I did was I, when I break out a paper pad, how do I know which paper I want to use? I will do this real quick. I will flip through and I will see what catches my eye. And you can almost guarantee you what's going to catch my eye. Floral. 
Yes. So I say when you're pulling out a paper pad and you're doing a base page, here's what I want you to do. Pick out your favorite paper and play with that. Because basically, sometimes our paper pad has two, sometimes three, even four of the same design. Of course, if you're Prima, I think they put about eight or ten of the same design, which we're going to use a Prima paper pad at, uh, tomorrow. Uh, go ahead and pull this out because then you're using your favorite papers out of this paper pad regardless of when you're going to use it at least you're playing with it now so that is my suggestion and then sometimes as you're uh, working through this process of doing base pages for me I'm always pulling florals so in some cases I make sure I don't pull a floral because that's what I'm always doing okay so sometimes break out of that comfort zone but then also to go with what you know and if you love a certain color if you love a certain design start with that and build from that definitely now also to another way to do color combinations is exactly what I use this hexagon paper this hex see what I'm saying yeah I would have started with that and I will tell you never mind you'll see tomorrow okay <laughs> yes I'm oh yeah I just love this hobby yes just love this hobby best day ever when we can scrapbook yes okay so as I was flipping through you see this so you can always pull a piece of paper from your pattern paper or you can pull a piece of paper from your pad that has multi-color such as I did in this case and then you just pull corresponding colors and you know they're going to work why because it's already in your paper and it's already in your pad okay look at that I could have pulled any of those turquoise any of those pinks had fun with it okay so that's what i show just a little bit more tips and so come back tomorrow we're going to do another round of these base pages in our paper pad party oh, yes and then stay tuned there'll be uh, some uh, photos at the end of the video so that's all i have for today come back to rts because you never know what we're gonna do bye